I've been coming here for 21 years. So uh, this hall always was speakers, aftermarket, you know, the, the muscle cars. You've still got the car manufacturers that really sort of turned this into the world's largest auto show. Um, but it's still hardware. You know, they're still showing the, you know, this is what it's going to look like inside the car. These are the concept cars for, they're not really buying into the, or are not demonstrating yet, what artificial intelligence and what software is going to mean, how you're going to provide cyber security. It's part of the conversation, but it's not, it's not coming out in terms of the demonstrations that they're showing. Wrapping up another year of CES, we're in the Automotive Hall. I'm here with Heavy Reading's best looking analyst, Steve Bell. Um, Steve, tell us what is the theme of this year's show from an automotive perspective? Components, things coming together, systems integration. And you look at all of the components that are being shown here, LiDAR, radar, infrared, um, Li-Fi. Um, then you've got different cameras and cameras that are being fused with other sensors, um, both external and also internal. I mean, a lot of them are, are about driver distraction. There is so much in terms of the different technologies that are going on. One of the challenges is how are you going to introduce that into the vehicles? Um, the, one of the uh, conference themes that came up was, should cars be modular? Well, with electrification of cars, it simplifies things because you go from three and a half thousand components to 300 components. And then you take that into the other context of voice coming into the, into the car. So Amazon is huge here with Alexa, big push in terms of, right. you know, everybody loves Alexa in the home, I want it in my car. Well, right. if you're an automaker, this is this is like the over the top for the mobile industry. It's like the voice activation, whether it's Alexa or Siri or Bixby or any of the others, there's got to be an abstraction layer that says what is the value add for the automotive component or manufacturer um, that's also going to provide a user experience for, for the uh, users. There's a war going on. Uh, digital short-range communication and selling the vehicle to right. X. Basically, people had argued that DSRC is a legacy technology. We should stay with the legacy. The new legacy would be the several million cars in the U.S. a year that will have cellular V2X connectivity beginning in 2022. CV2X direct communication is, is uh, uh, tested uh, to be better than DSRC. But actually, my, uh, my analysis and my colleagues' analysis of the re testing was that the, the, the philosophy was flawed and the results are not reliable. But at the end of the day, as somebody says, it's safety is the key. They've been trying to get DSRC in vehicles for 15 years. So maybe the opportunity of the car of the future here is the person who can bring all these elements together in the most meaningful way possible because I think the OEMs have realized they can't do everything themselves. Well, a single platform, um, you know, whether it's like an Android, I mean, if you go back and you, you take the analogy of the phone industry, you know, Motorola and Nokia and Ericsson were all doing their own software and all of a sudden Linux-based Android came along and 85% of the world's phones now operate on a single platform. Um, why would car manufacturers have um, a, you know, a, a different approach? Well, anyway, Steve, a lot of interesting stuff this year. You know, we'll be following a lot of these automotive trends on TU Auto. And uh, another CES is in the books. We'll see you in a couple weeks at MWC. Barcelona, see you there. All right, Thanks. thank you so much. Thanks.